This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by AMD's A Series of Chips. Welcome back to the episode of Rumor Roundup. This is the show where we take all the tech rumors from the week, and there were quite a few this week, and we smash them, we condense them, and we say here is a nice appetizing dish of rumorness for you to enjoy. There's a lot to talk about. If you don't have to follow all the rumors from the week, this is the only show you have to watch. Uh, this week we're going to talk about Samsung getting into the fingerprint scanning business. The X phone is coming, but might not be the way you think. Apple iWatch is already in testing with a 1.5 inch display. If you got a Galaxy S3 and you've been staring longingly at the Galaxy S4, fear not because it might be getting some of its key features. This is Rumor Roundup. Let's start rounding them up. So Sam Mobile was recently sent to file that suggested Samsung considered, or is perhaps still considering, adding fingerprint scanning technology to its line of plastic phones. We've seen this before with the Motorola Atrix 4G on AT&T, it had it for example, and Apple also is reportedly interested in adding its tech to the next gen iPhone, the 5S probably. The leak came in the form of a sexsettings.apk file that shows images where it appears in the phone. So one image suggests that the fingerprint scanner might have been built into the smartphone's home button just below the display. We don't know why Samsung ultimately bailed on the idea, perhaps it was too expensive or just unnecessary, though we do hope it continues to develop it and maybe we'll see the future devices. I think it's the only way it's going to work if it's fast, if it's smooth, if it doesn't sort of delay, you put your finger on it, automatically unlocks. It's got to be quicker than the face unlocks. Earlier in the week, we reported out a rumor that Motorola's X phone is likely slated for an AT&T release as the very sexily named XT1058, but could also be coming to Verizon as the equally sexy XT1060. Now a third X phone model, the XT156, has surfaced. The Motorola X phone is rumored to feature a unimpressive 720p display and dual core Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. It's pretty low in spec considering the quad core chipsets and a 1080p gorgeous displays we're seeing on this year's top tier handset. So we do think though there's a chance that the XT1056 might actually be a budget-friendly model of the X phone meant to compete with Samsung's horde of lower tier smartphones, but we'll need to wait for more information before making that conclusion. Apple is reportedly already testing its first smartwatch and it supposedly has a 1.5 inch OLED display according to fresh reports from the Economic Times. RIT display has reportedly been tapped to provide the screens and touch sensors for the device. Apparently, Apple had to settle on a 1.5 inch screen after it decided that a 1.8 inch display was just too big for most wrists. Foxconn is building the device and has already received an order for 1,000 units, Economic Times said. A separate report from Bloomberg in March suggested that more than 1,000 Apple employees were assigned to develop the iWatch and that the wearable computer will launch later this year. So we're not quite sure what it'll look like or how it'll work yet or what it's going to feel like or anything, but we do hope that Apple embeds Siri support and that it works seamlessly with iOS devices, obviously the iPhone and the iPad. Uh, but perhaps we'll see something at Apple's developers conference, WWDC, when it kicks off next month, but it might be too early for the company to chat about about its iWatch plans. So Samsung already said many of the Galaxy S4 software flourishes will arrive on the Galaxy S3 in a freshly leaked build of Android 4.2.2. So the firmware is currently in the very early testing phase, so the kinks are still definitely being worked out. However, software does offer plenty of clues about the S3 owners can expect when it finally hits. Most immediate difference is found in the lock screen where users can set multiple widgets, new effects, even set a customizable message, so that's cool. But beyond the lock screen, the build adds user interface tweaks for much more fluid experience, including a really neat two finger swipe down that reveals the S3's quick toggle menu and also tab settings, uh, mirroring the look of the Galaxy S4. Additionally, the update includes features such as driving mode, updated S-Voice, and new screen modes. I do give Samsung credit for continuing not only support an older device, but also give it new features and new life. So let me take a minute to thank our friends and sponsors at AMD. Alright, so there aren't that many times in my life that I get to feel like a spy, but carrying this thing around, I honestly felt like I was right out of a James Bond movie. It is crazy freaking cool. So what you're looking at here is Temish. It's the code name for the microchips that are going to be branded as the A-Series Elite Mobility APU from AMD. So obviously, this is just a prototype, clearly. By the time it's all done, it's going to look like this. This beautiful tablet. Uh, what this is hopefully going to do is sort of bridge that gap between tablets and full-on desktop. Be able to handle anything that you want to throw at it. 
from your standard media consumption stuff to full on gaming. And we can check out, you know, will it play? This thing will play a lot of awesome content. In fact, we've got loaded up on it here a sneak preview of what's yet to come Steam. And if this thing can handle the games that we play all the time, if it can handle our Left 4 Deads, you know, at really high settings and just the things that we like to do, uh, it'll be a good test what the processor can handle. AMD is really trying to sort of bridge the gap and be the one chip for everything. For the folks that want to just take a tablet and go watch a movie on an airplane to folks that really want to play some hardcore games they are thinking that this guy right here ultimately can do it all i want to tell you about another show that i do techno buffaloes driven this week we talked about audi put out a press release about tesla saying don't give them too much credit don't put them up on a pedestal it made no sense that audi would even give tesla any intention but they did it's kind of fun so check it out right here Anyway guys, thank you for watching. Please give this video a big fatty thumbs up. We most definitely appreciate it. Check us out at technobuffalo.com for latest and greatest tech news. I'm John Rettinger. I'll see you next video.